morning YouTubers. Uh, my name's Chris and I just want to talk about my Bosch 4100 table saw. Purchased it in 2012. I understand it's not the latest model uh, being 2017 now, but uh, a lot of you are probably making a decision similar to what I made back then and comparing this to maybe a Bosch table saw or another saw and just wondering what the advantages, disadvantages of this saw over some others might be. So anyhow, I just wanted to talk about this saw for a little bit and I got my handy dandy cheat sheet. I'm just going to talk about the facts. A brief comparison, I'm not evaluating this saw against DeWalt. I just want to talk a little bit about what I saw when I was looking at purchasing this saw and then ultimately why I made the decision. And now, being several years later, what I like and don't like about this saw. So anyhow, without further ado, I'm going to show you a little bit more of the features. So. My saw came with a gravity rise stand. Currently I have it mounted permanently to my workbench. So the stand, I did really like it. I ended up giving it away to a neighbor uh, for a miter saw when I built this because uh, I really just didn't need it anymore. But uh, one of the things I, or facts about the saw is it's got storage for every accessory that comes with it, attaches to the saw in some fashion. So all the stock accessories, um, the guards store right here along the side. The rip fence also stores right underneath the blade wrench and any extra blades. Over here on this side is where the miter gauge stores. So you have your rocker on off switch. Uh, there's no safety on this switch. However, it's a nice, easy, accessible switch. Um, for depth of cut adjustment, it's right here. It can cut up to three and a quarter inch at 90 degrees and two and two and a quarter at 45 degrees. Uh, it has angular adjustment from negative two to 47 degrees. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and take the guard off. I really like the quick release features so as far as a guard um, it locks in the up position so if you're running something through you can still see your blade which is one of the reasons why people will take a guard off and when it locks up like that um, it's easy to get out of the way in case you need to see something for setup and you're not fighting a, a blade or a guard that's just uh, falling down on your workpiece. So that's a really nice feature that actually makes the guard very user friendly. Similarly, um, you just lift the lever and the whole thing pops right off. Anti-kickback pause, same thing, you push a button and it pops right off. Riving knife stays on, but if you need to make a cut that's not a through cut <clears throat> or you just need to get it out of the way for an adjustment, it's very easily stowed also. So right, wrong, or indifferent, you see uh, me operate my saw a lot of times without any of the guard features or the riving knife in place. Partially that's for video clarity and also partially that's because I incorporate some other safety features such as cross-cut sleds and uh, double push sticks, etc. So continuing on, the accessories that this table saw came with, uh, we've already talked about the gravity rise stand, the rip fence, a miter gauge, which is decent quality, and it comes with uh, a guard, anti-kickback paws, and a riving knife. The table top is 29 inches wide by 21 and a half inches deep. There are table extension bars for both the width and out feed uh, available for this stall. It has a 15 amp soft start motor which is good whenever you're limited to uh, breaker capacity of maybe 15 or 20 amps depending on how your garage or shop is wired and you may be running a shop vac and a table saw at the same time. Uh, the fence is a smooth glide fence it has a, uh, an arbor lock lever for when you're changing your blades. You don't have to put a board in there and wedge it in between the blade. 
Uh, we've already talked about the depth of cut, which is three and an eighth inches at 90 and two and a quarter inches at 45 degrees. And also this arbor can hold a dado stack up to about five eighths of an inch. So now I just want to show you how easy it is to interact with the accessories, putting them on and off and storing them. So the fence, which I typically either have on or have off, depending on cross cutting or ripping, comes out, locks on just like that. Feeder paws, or anti-kickback paws rather, store upside down right here. Lock right into place. The guard sits up and under. And locks into place. And then you have blade storage. So I typically keep my dado stack and zero clearance inserts, etc., right alongside. There's one of the inserts I made, and those are basically the cutouts you have to make in order to clear the things that stick up in the carriage. One of the things I'll talk about in a little bit that I don't like is the blade shroud is down here about four inches from the top of the table. It doesn't move. However, I think it's cut away to allow access to this um, lever and the arbor nut but I think they could have actually brought that up higher or at least made an adjustable guard there for dust collection. You can see the dust collection. So the top of the table has a coating. It's not just aluminum. And uh, that's actually one of the negatives I'll talk about later. But I do love how smooth, smoothly the fence, it locks on both ends, adjusted by this lever. It glides very smoothly back and forth. Um, in order to maximize rip capacity, you just raise this lever, bring the fence out to its max position, and then extend the whole table and lock it in again. And then you have about an inch and three quarters here to support material for the length of the rip cut. Here's the miter gauge storage over here. I'm doing this one-handed so it's a little bit awkward but you can see the quality of the miter gauge isn't too bad it does have a uh, a roller bearing there and it has a t-track type slot so the gauge has a little bit of slop in it um, that can be adjusted a little bit if you wanted to you could uh, tap and add a tap through the aluminum bar and add some bushings to it. But normally for most cross cuts, I just use a sled unless I'm making miters. So anyhow, comparing the features of this saw to the DW744, which was the direct comparison model at the time I bought it. <clears throat> the DeWalt beats it a little bit on RPMs. Uh, they have 46 or 4,800 as compared to 3,600. No noticeable power uh, difference. My friend has a, a DeWalt and uh, his saw does spin a little bit faster, but as far as cut quality, I never noticed a difference. Their table was 22 by 26 compared to the 29 by 21 and a half. So the Bosch won out with about three inches of width on the table. Uh, the DeWalt 744 had a 24 inch rip capacity. This Bosch has a 25 inch, which is one of the main reasons why I went with it. That allows me to cut any size that I want out of a sheet of plywood down the uh, the length of the sheet. Um, the DeWalt has a rack and pinion type fence and this one we've already talked about the smooth glide fence. I just felt that I was interfacing with this saw much like I would a cabinet saw uh, which is why I preferred this one. The stand quality that this one came with out of the box uh, was much better the DeWalt I looked at just had a scissor stand and this one had a rolling stand and there I'm talking about direct cost comparison and of course I think DeWalt's corrected that 
um, at the extended position I don't think the 744 had any kind of material support I see DeWalt has like a flip over support on their saws now and I think they're beating the Bosch on rip capacity however that's also with that rack and pinion type sliding fence so ultimately why did I buy this for the time at or at the time rather I felt I was getting more for my money here it had a better rip capacity uh, the depth of cuts were about the same uh, it was mostly came down to just the interaction with the saw when it came to making an adjustment on angle and once again I'm doing this all one-handed so it's a little bit awkward or depth of cut and here it squeaks a little bit I need some oil or adjustments on the fence this saw just felt like it was a lot more rugged and I felt like I was dealing with a cabinet saw the other thing that I liked is the feet uh, the storage of accessories was very intuitive. I'm uh, probably just like any other person. I'm pretty lazy and if something doesn't work, I either come up with my own solution or it ends up sitting somewhere off to the side on a workbench top and I need all the space I can get in my shop. So the fact that it had storage that was easy to use and it was right out of the way, which is something I'm used to fighting with rip fences on a table saw whenever you need to clear the tabletop for uh, cross cutting or uh, sheets of plywood. So ultimately what I like about this, I like the quality of the accessories, the fence, the miter gauge for the cost. They're very comparable to some of the cabinets, cabinet saws that I've dealt with around the $800 to $1,000 mark. Uh, the gauge accuracy and the fence accuracy, it cuts very square. I haven't made any adjustments to this as far as uh, run out in the arbor or the fence. The storage of accessories, which I've talked about repeatedly throughout the video. The overall feel of the table saw. This feels more like a cabinet saw than it does a job site saw, especially in the setup I have now with a full outfeed table. And the general tolerancing and cut quality. What I do not like about this saw, and you may be able to see, it's covered in dust. Um, the dust collection shroud, I just feel like that could be improved. Um, because it doesn't come up all the way to the underside of the table, uh, this saw puts about as much dust directly on the floor or the ground as it does out through the uh, injection port. But I think that's pretty much the same for most contractor saws, no matter how the dust collection is on them. So I don't think that that's a, uh, a disadvantage to any of its competitors. I just think that that's um, not as good of quality as it could be for someone like me that wants to get rid of all the dust. Uh, the table coating. So I'd prefer that this were just a aluminum, aluminum coating with maybe a, or aluminum table coated with a clear coat. Uh, I find it difficult to clean pitch and other things that build up on a table I took some acetone to this at one point in time and you can see it actually uh, messed up the finish. Um, but this is the actual, so the surface has very little wear even after the several years of heavy use. Um, all of the adjustment or all the gauges are fully adjustable and stock. I didn't have to make a single adjustment and several years later I still trust these arrows. They make uh, precise cuts. I can trust my fence position adjustment and I don't have to check it with a tape measure or a ruler. Um, one of the things I also dislike is at the fully extended position there is a little bit of table droop that is adjustable and I have made an adjustment in the past but now it's gotten to the point where you can see um, it dips down. This is a bad angle because that's actually exaggerated. Here we go you can see it droops about an eighth of an inch down the table and of course when you're cutting a sheet of plywood you don't want to knock any corners on your outfeed at all and the throat plate geometry so one of the things 
that I like to have is zero clearance inserts. It just makes cleaner cuts. Um, for miters, you can make tighter cuts up against the fence with miters whenever you have a zero clearance insert. Anyhow, it's not the easiest saw to build a zero clearance insert for, partially because of this. You have to cut a, uh, a rabbit out and then if you were to make it so that it doesn't interfere with the carriage all the way up to the max cut, you have some screws that stick up here. So those can all be fixed with just boring some holes and cutting a rabbit. But uh, as compared to a cabinet saw where a lot of times this throat plate fits flat into the, uh, the table, that's not the case here. So anyhow, please hit me up if you have questions. It's a pretty long video. But uh, ultimately, that's why I bought this saw. And uh, check out my uh, micro shop if, you, if you'd like to go to my channel and uh, see some other videos I've posted. Hope you're having a great Saturday.